This is the first of a series of three short videos presenting the Attic inscriptions in the Fitzwilliam Museum, Cambridge. In it I discuss the two inscribed decrees of the Athenian Assembly in the collection, both of which date from the Classical period. The sovereign decision-making body of Classical Athens was the Assembly of Adult Male Citizens. And fortunately for historians, it was customary to inscribe some types of assembly decision or decree on stone. We have already looked at one assembly decree in the first of this series of videos. The decree in Petworth House, which honoured the girls who worked on the robe for the goddess Athena towards the end of the 2nd century BC. By that time, honorific decrees were the only type of decree that the Athenians normally inscribed on stone. In the classical democracy of the 5th and 4th centuries BC, however, the Athenians inscribed a wider range of assembly decisions. These included interstate agreements, and it's to such an agreement that the earlier of the two decree fragments in the Fitzwilliams collection belongs. You might notice three things about the text inscribed on this stone. First, towards the right in the top line, there is a single letter I, iota in Greek. This is the last letter of the Greek word for gods, theoi which was commonly inscribed at the top of Athenian decrees. It reminds us that they were generally set up in religious sanctuaries, usually on the Acropolis, and that inscribing them has a religious context, even where the content of the decree, as in this case, is in our terms mainly of a secular character. There is, however, some religious content in that, as we shall see, the text on the stone includes the words of the religious oaths that the parties swore to adhere to the agreement. Second, in the line immediately below that, you can read in large letters M M A T E Upsilon E. These letters have approximately the same sounds in Greek as they do in English. So, Matue. From the end of the Greek word egramatue, which means was secretary. This is related to the word grammata in Greek, meaning letters or writings. In this sentence, the word was preceded by the name of the secretary of the council, who was in office when the decree was passed, and was responsible for having the decree inscribed on stone. Thirdly, two lines further on, you might be able to make out a string of five letters, L, A, what looks like an X, but in Greek is the letter chi, with the sound ch, E, sigma or S. Incidentally, you'll notice that the L or lambda has a form rather similar to the letter L in our own alphabet. Athens didn't officially adopt the standard form of Greek lambda until after the end of the Peloponnesian War in 403 BC. These letters spell out a name, Lachis, who was an Athenian general in the Peloponnesian War known from the pages of the historian Thucydides, and who, we now learn, was also the man who proposed this decree in the Athenian assembly. Four other fragments, all of them now in the Epigraphical Museum, Athens, belong to the same inscription. Here is a translation of the whole text.
This, then, is a formal agreement between Athens and Halias, a city in the Peloponnese on the southern coast of the Argilid. It was a strategic location that, as we know from Thucydides, tended to be a focus of attention in the 5th century BC in periods of conflict between the alliances led by Athens and Sparta. Thucydides tells us that in the summer of 425 BC, the Athenians established a garrison in this region at Methana, and from there carried out raids on the territories of Halias and other cities. It was probably under pressure of these raids that Halias made this agreement with the Athenians, which can be dated to 4243 BC. Shortly after the agreement was made, in spring 423 BC, Athens and Sparta concluded a general truce, and we know from Thucydides that the proposer at Athens of the decree on the truce was the same general, Lachys, who proposed our decree on the agreement with Halias. And a year later, Lachys was negotiator and co-signatory with Nicias of the Peace of Nicias, which marked the end of the first phase of the Peloponnesian War in 4221 BC. We don't know whether the Athenians actually got as far as establishing the garrison in Halias, provided for in our decree, before the wider truce between Athens and Sparta took effect. Here is an image of the second Athenian decree fragment in the Fitzwilliams collection. As you can see, what is preserved in this case is not the body of the decree, but the relief sculpture from the top of it. Not all decree inscriptions were headed by reliefs of this kind, but quite a few were. The relief depicts the goddess Athena to the left. Her name is inscribed above the top of her head. The space in the middle of the name was to accommodate the plume of her helmet, which would have been painted in. Her raised left hand will have clasped a spear, which was also originally painted in. The second figure, approaching Athena with his right arm raised in a gesture of respectful greeting, is a mature male in civilian dress. The label above him has been chipped away, but he probably represents Demos, a personification of the Athenian people. To the right stands a younger figure in military dress. The label above his head is partly preserved, and two possible readings of it have been suggested. But first, a word of explanation is needed about the circumstances of discovery of this inscription. This relief and the Halliace decree fragment were brought to Cambridge in 1801 by E.D. Clark, a well-known Cambridge figure and traveller, who visited Athens at the same time as Lord Elgin's agents were collecting what became the Elgin marbles. Clark claimed that he had found this relief not in Athens, but in Sigeon on the coast of Asia Minor in the Troad, and on that basis it was ingeniously suggested in the 1960s that the name inscribed above the figure was Protesilaus, a Greek hero of the Trojan Wars who was first to set foot on Trojan soil and paid for his courage with his life. In other cases, however, Clark's provenances are demonstrably unreliable, and it's long been suspected that this fragment actually comes from Athens. In that case, it may be that the name label reads not Protesilaos, but Menelaos, the mythical king of Sparta in the Trojan Wars. 
and the relief was from a decree concerning relations between Athens and Sparta. Stylistically, the relief can be dated to around the third quarter of the 4th century BC, so around a century later than the fragment of the treaty with Halliace. And there is one likely context at this period. After the Battle of Chironia in 338 BC, Athens had become a subordinate ally of Philip of Macedon and later of his son Alexander. But in 331 BC, the Spartans under King Aegis led a rebellion against Macedon, which the Athenians very nearly supported. The Athenians are said to have been eager to send a naval contingent to support Aegis, being thwarted only by the politician de Mardi's refusal to release the funding for the venture. In the event, Aegis was defeated by Alexander's lieutenant in Europe, Antipater, at Megalopolis in the Peloponnese, probably in spring 330 BC. But whether or not the Athenians initially passed concrete measures to support Aegis, an Athenian decree, perhaps for example one honouring Spartan envoys, in the context of constructive Athenian diplomacy with Sparta at this time, is very plausible. And in such a decree, Sparta would very appropriately have been represented by Menelaos, a figure famous for his role in the Trojan Wars, a Panhellenic military endeavour in which Athens had also participated. <laughs>